Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching India tonight with me, Sumita Kareer. Of course, our top story this hour, one nation, one poll. It's been a long-held promise of the government to hold simultaneous polls and now that promise is a step closer to becoming reality. In a landmark move, the Union Cabinet today cleared the proposal to hold simultaneous elections in the country as recommended by a high-level committee headed by former President Ram Nath Kovind. In fact, uh, uh, according to today's policy announcement, elections will be held in two phases. The first phase will cover Lok Sabha elections and Assembly elections, while the second phase will cover local body elections, that is within 100 days of the first phase. Now, government has invited feedback as a report will go for consultation and the bill is likely to be tabled in the winter session of the parliament. But opposition leaders say that this is a move to kill India's federal structure and decimate regional parties and regional leaders. The question then is, is this move then threatening the federal nature of states and is the idea even practical? What kind of amendments to the constitution will be needed and what happens to states that haven't yet completed their full term? We'll go to our guests tonight to decode all of those questions uh, but uh, let's quickly take a look at what Union uh, INB and IT Minister Ashwini Vaishnav said today after that proposal was cleared. There is a widespread support for, so for simultaneous elections in the country. That's why NDA Sarkar ki cabinet ne aaj sarv sammati se sarv sammati se is uh, in recommendations ko accept kiya aur iska implementation do phases mein hoga jaisa ki committee ke recommendations mein hai first phase mein lok sabha aur assemblies ke elections ko simultaneous karane ka prayas hoga aur uske second phase mein local body elections se jo hai gram panchayat jila panchayat block mein panchayat samiti aur jitne bhi urban local bodies hain चाहे म्यूनिसपैलिटीज हो चाहे म्यूनिसिपल कमिटीज हो चाहे म्यूनिसिपल कॉरपोरेशन हो उन सब के लोकल बॉडी इलेक्शंस को विद इन हंड्रेड डेज ऑफ जनरल इलेक्शंस में करवाना जिससे कि एक बार में सारे इलेक्शन का प्रोसेस कंप्लीट हो और फिर पाँच साल तक सब के सब मेहनत करके देश के निर्माण में लगे हम तो उसको नहीं मानते ये, ये नहीं चलने वाला है डेमोक्रेसी में ये डेमोक्रेसी को टिकाना है तो जब जब चाहिए तब इलेक्शन करना पड़ेगा All right, uh, and uh, to decode uh, if this idea is even practical, we are now joined by O.P. Rawat, former election commissioner. Thank you very much, Mr. Rawat, for joining us uh, this evening. Now, the BGP says uh, that it, uh, uh, you know, we don't need simultaneous, we don't need separate elections. We need simultaneous elections so that, uh, uh, you know, burden on the exchequer can be reduced. Of course, additional expenses can be reduced and it will ensure economic growth and stability. While I do understand this point about bringing in reforms to the electoral process but is this something the idea of simultaneous elections is this something that India needs all right so I'm told that we've lost that connection with Mr. Rawat we'll try and establish that connection once again but let's take a look at what this idea of one nation one poll really is what are some of the cons what are some of the merits and if this is something that India needs my colleague Ankur has put together this explainer take a look Yes, before getting into details, let us understand what is one nation, one election in simple terms. Holding simultaneously Lok Sabha as well as the Vidhan Sabha elections will encounter for one nation, one election. Now, what is the key development which has happened? Of course, Cabinet has now cleared the proposal. There was a committee which was formed, an eight-member committee, which was headed by former President Ramnath Kovind, and that had recommended the pros and cons of one nation, one election. Now, before that, let us understand what has been there in the history. In, uh, till 1967, there was a scenario where Lok Sabha election as well as uh, Vidhan Sabha elections or state elections were held simultaneously. But what went wrong due to that, uh, we, were, we are holding different... 
So I'm told that we are now joined by Mr. O.P. Rawat, the former election commissioner of uh, India. Thank you very much, sir. We lost that line with you earlier, but thank you very much once again for joining us here. I was just speaking about what the BGP has been stating, what the government has been stating in support of this idea, stating that, uh, you know, it will reduce the burden on exchequer, it will reduce uh, voter fatigue. Also, it will lead to sustained uh, development and will ensure economic growth and stability of the country. But, but let me ask you, is this something, is the idea of all holding simultaneous elections across the country because this is going to be a mammoth exercise. Is this something that India needs as of now, so far as speaking about electoral reforms is concerned? Actually, uh, Election Commission has always been of the view that uh, synchronizing all elections is uh, needed. And uh, that is why in 1983, they had themselves suggested that uh, after 1967, uh, many elections have gone out of sync. And therefore, uh, government should make certain amendments to the uh, constitution as well as to the Representation of People Act, and we can synchronize these elections again. But nothing was done, and it uh, languished uh, in the office of the government. Same thing is happening here also. 2015, first time it was raised, one nation, one election, and election commission has promptly said that yes, it will be feasible, you will have to make certain amendments and give us some time for arranging the logistic uh, of uh, forces and uh, EVM and VVPET manufacture. But I valid think points. after two years, very valid yeah. points that you're raising here right now, that is of logistics and constitutional amendments, sir. Yeah. So let yeah. me ask you, let me ask you about this first point first. Does the election commission have the wherewithal to make sure that it sees light of the day? How big of uh, how big is this exercise going to be for the election commission? I mean, general elections we've seen, they are so huge. I think it is the largest exercise all across the world. But help us understand the logistical needs and are we prepared for an idea like like this to be implemented only talking about the logistics so far actually for uh, lok sabha and uh, vidhan sabha uh, there is very little difference same polling station two tables two evms two vv pads that's all nothing else nothing more is required and therefore it is quite feasible and number of evms and vv pads required will increase and that is why election commission wanted some time two to three years to manufacture these machines and procure these machines. That is all. But COVID committee has included panchayats and local municipalities elections in this. Now that is making sure that this thing can never fructify because all these elections are held under different laws of the state governments. So unless those laws are amended and there are many states under opposition rule and they are not agreeing, they are uh, having reservations. So if they don't amend, where, where do you go? So with this committee's approval, committee's recommendations approval by the cabinet, I think we have not reached anywhere as yet, unless something is done in concrete terms for amending the constitution, for amending the representation of people act, and for amending the state municipal laws and panchayat laws. Unless that is okay. done, we are, we are nowhere. Okay, so so when you say when you say that we've not really reached anywhere so far as the implementation of this exercise is concerned, I understand this is the first move, uh, you know, to sort of implement this agenda, this policy move of the government, uh, and and I understand that there might be some constitutional amendments will be needed. So so help us understand what happens next now that cabinet has approved this huge policy move. BJP, uh, you know, has majority in Rajya Sabha, even Lok Sabha, but uh, what kind of uh, uh, you know, constitutional amendments are we looking at? What happens next? They have to amend the uh, articles which stipulate the term of uh, Vidhan Sabha, term of Lok Sabha, the President Rule, the Article 356, and uh, no confidence motion. Uh, all those things have to be looked into and amended. Uh, same, similarly, in the Representation of People Act, Wherever the timelines are given, all those sections will have to be amended. And all these things, I think, have gone to the government many a times. Election Commission has furnished, Law Commission has furnished, Niti Aayog has furnished. So everything is on the table of the government. Uh, once they start amending, only then we will consider that, yes, something is moving. Approving a committee's report has moved nothing because it was already on the table of the government. Hmm. Hmm. 
So I also want to bring in the opposition's point of view here. We've spoken about what the government feels about it, but uh, you know the opposition has been vociferous as far as this idea is concerned, stating that this is a threat to India's federal structure. Would you agree to that point? That uh, I would defer because the uh, uh, federal structure was not threatened when simultaneous elections were held in 51, 57, 62, 67. It was ne never under threat. So I don't think that uh, this kind of uh, threat will be there if simultaneous polls are held for Lok Sabha and Vidhan Sabha. Okay. Okay, and uh, and uh, what do you have to say about um, you know you know the fact that this argument that uh, you know of course local issues you know will get neglected and it is national issues that will be of importance and of course if you have a leader like Prime Minister Modi then everything uh, you know could uh, could not be addressed will not be addressed and local issues will not be addressed. What do you have to say about that? Uh, there also there I will have a little difference of opinion. Like in 2019 elections, Odisha and uh, Lok Sabha, both elections were held in the same polling station. Two EVMs delivered very different results. One EVM delivered the result uh, strongly in favor of uh, BJD. And uh, one EVM delivered uh, more number of seats for uh, national party ruling at the center. So uh, we must have faith in our voter and it, his maturity. Voter has matured like anything and they know what is what and where to vote. And uh, in a democracy, if we don't have faith in our voter and we feel that voter can be saved like anything, then I think we are uh, at the wrong foot. Hmm. All right, uh, Mr. Rawat, thank you very much for joining us uh, and sharing your thoughts and your perspectives on this um, you know, big policy move that has been introduced. It has been vetted by the cabinet, the union cabinet today, one nation, one poll, one nation, one election will be implemented in two phases as the government states. And of course, before uh, that actually becomes reality, uh, there are several constitutional amendments that will need to be made. Of course, uh, you know, it will need to be passed in uh, the parliament as well. On that note, uh, ladies and gentlemen. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.